may be getting. You can't always. This is the death. Remarkably him. Turn back. Towards God. Rise up. During the war, we lost everything. We lost money, we lost belongings. Running up and down, no stability, no financial freedom. The political environment and the economic environment in South Sudan, he, he was hated. They wanted to arrest him or to kill him, and then uh, Father Stephen has to come to Australia. There is practically a lot of suffering going on. We have to put up with it. Our Lord himself suffered for our sake. Why should we not suffer for the sake of the others? I was born in, uh, in the border of Sudan and Central Africa during the civil strife between the Muslim North and the Christian South. Sudan was one country before, uh, colonized of course by the British mainly and the Egyptians. But in 1956, got its independence. At the independence, there was problem between the South and the North. Went on into civil war um, in Sudan, mainly between uh, um, Islamic religion in the, in the north and then uh, the, predominantly the Christians and uh, 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 the Africans in the, in the south. The main reason really for that war, uh, among others, was only three. Uh, the first one was uh, politics, which was dominated by the north, uh, culture and, uh, and then uh, religion which was also dominated by Islam. When I was born, the, the, the government soldiers of the Muslim North, they were tracking us. And then my mother hid me in a hole and she laid over me so that I should not cry. But miraculously, uh, it happened that uh, I did not cry and the soldiers did not see me, but one of them came and was peeing on us. And then my mother was scared, thinking that uh, I was going to cry. And then the soldiers will now no locate where we are and, uh, and they shoot us. I never cried, I never felt it. We saw the hand of God in it, delivering us from this trouble, from this suffering. We reached Central Africa. We lived in the refugee camp for a period of about six years. And I had a little bit of knowledge about life in the refugee camp. It was not an easy place. There were a lot of sicknesses, tropical disease and the airborne disease, waterborne disease, and there were insects called jiggers. They enter under the toes or the nails, fingernails, and then they grow there and they give a lot of pain, but then they need to be taken out with a safety pin. And this affects, affects the mental capabilities of children. When there was the uh, Addis Ababa agreement signed between the Muslim North and the Christian South, uh, there was, we were repatriated from the refugee camp back to Sudan. I come from a very influential family, and uh, we were six, six brothers and three sisters. Most of us went to school. My sisters, at that time, we were not allowed to study, and though, despite the fact that they were really intelligent, but uh, women were not allowed to study, so they, they remained at home to do domestic works. But we, as boys, we all went to school. 
When the war started in, 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 in the Sudan, um, there were a lot of suffering. Of course, we had to run here and there. We lost everything. We, we became very poor, but, but we, never, we never forgot the God. We never left going to church. Every Sunday, my father would say, all of us have to go ahead, and then he will come from behind. Coming back from the church, my dad will ask us individually, what did we hear, what did the priest say? And then we started to get in, to start to, to like going to the church. And from there, he asked me if I could become a priest. Uh, I accepted, and then we went to, with my sister to, to, the, to the seminary. My, her husband was teaching in the seminary, and so I, I was with her. One day we went to the church and that's when my vocation came. Uh, I was able to know exactly that this is when God is calling me. Father Stephen, from my understanding, really was a well-disciplined uh, young man in, in the seminary, not causing troubles, very, very patient. And he was a sacristan for all the time he was, the three years we spent together. We did not study in only one place, but the seminary was moving from one place to another. And we had to also move from our diocese to go to the interdiocesan senior seminary. These three years going to the seminary and back, uh, it involved a lot of suffering. We had faith in God, that's why we didn't really uh, fear. Uh, there was no fear at all because we wanted to make it. Uh, finishing the sem senior seminary, we had to come back again to go to the major seminary. We, we fell into a number of ambushes by prayer. Rosary was our, our weapon. When I was already in the major seminary in the philosophy, the war was now intensifying and the, the, the freedom fighters were now shelling the town. And the, all the bishops were scared what was going to what is going to be the fate of the seminarians. Then the, the bishops decided that they have to relocate the seminary again from Juba to, to Khartoum, where we, where we finished our philosophy. And uh, there uh, I, I became then a priest. Father Stephen became a priest in a very difficult circumstance in Khartoum, when he had gone to, to Wau. And uh, in a major seminary in Wau, war had already started and it was ups and downs. So it was not an easy, easy environment of uh, studying peaceful and, and, and all that. Uh, tomorrow you will run from a place to a place because of, of war. Through all this, Father Stephen managed through these difficulties of war, he went on to, to Khartoum and then uh, was, became a priest. I was given two parishes at the same time. They were farther apart. I used bicycles only to move along those areas. That one was again another level of suffering whereby there, is, there are no shelters, no utensils, no means of transport. I use a bicycle to travel 100 miles, which is around 150 kilometers apart. Traveling on that road, you are afraid of wild animals and there is no food, no water, no any shopping centers along the road. Alone on the journey like this, so scary when, it, when the night comes, it is again another nightmare. I, I have to look to a nearby outstation whereby I can go there and join together with a Christian, pray in the evening. When I move to the outstation to meet the Christians in those locations, we have to face with the scarcity of food, clean water, no clean water. I depend on wild fruits. 
uh, and but still life was happy. There was a joy in it. Otherwise, if there was no joy, then it, it, I, I couldn't make all those moves. One day I decided to visit the bishop. I had a, a, a brand new car and the, the freedom fighters, of course, were moving on foot. And so they, they said, why, why should I have a car while they are the ones who want to liberate the, the country and they are moving on foot. So they decided just out of jealousy to assassinate me. But uh, they said they, they laid an ambush for me on the way because they knew that whenever I go to, to visit the bishop, I always come back to my parish around three o'clock in the evening until uh, six o'clock is the, is the last time. God just uh, made it that I should start from the, where the bishop was, and that was 84 miles away. I started from six o'clock then because during the, the roads were bad. I arrived to that location at midnight, and then uh, while the, the, the soldiers were all asleep. Some are drunk, and so God just delivered me from their hands until I reached my parish. In 2013, South Sudan also got itself into its own problem. This one really, again, politics in it. Um, this became so tribal and the struggle for, for power as, as, as part of, uh, of, of politics, you know, control of power and resources, and then uh, tribalism. That really is the, the main uh, factors within uh, the, the issues of war. After South Sudan got its independence, uh, I was uh, staying in, I was the parish priest of one of the parishes. Then there was now the, the, the tribal fighting going on. The fighters wanted to come even and assassinate some of us in the parish. One of the good Samaritan from the security alerted my brother to tell me to move quickly from the parish. So we had to, to board our motorbikes and, uh, and, uh, and uh, leave the parish. Uh, we went uh, to live, we went three kilometers away from the parish to wait and to see what was going on. And then the, the cows and the, the cattle were all brought into the parish. Uh, and uh, that time I remained three days in the bush, uh, sleeping on dry leaves and eating raw cassava, drinking dirty water until the bishop coordinated with the with, uh, with one of the, with our governor to remove, to come and uh, rescue me from the location. And then I was then taken back to, to where the bishop was and stayed there bef then before I came to Australia. As a priest, he had to preach the gospel and he has to relate the gospel to the situation of the people of South Sudan. He has to relate the, the gospel to the, to the parishioners of his, uh, of his parish. When Father Stephen was preaching against all this tribalism, this nepotism, and these problems that the warlords and the, and, and the tribal warlords were causing, then they tended to hurt him. And, 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 and as such, uh, I, had to, to, uh, I had to work so that we can then be able uh, to, to bring Father Stephen here through the, the uh, discussions of the, the churches here and the church in uh, uh, his, uh, his diocese in uh, Tombra Yambio. So that is how Father Stephen comes here. He only talks about God and tells us about God and how we can improve and be closer to God. Father always, at the end of Mass, always tells us to have a wonderful day, have a great day. He only wants to give us joy and make us happy and to keep us closer to God and to the Mother Mary. He doesn't make a public show of his faith. Father Stephen uses his stories in homilies or in 
appropriate situations, but he's, he's not complaining. He's always there for people that are looking for support or looking for guidance, but his own faith is his own story. And it's not a par parishioner's, that, that's not something that parishioners often see. Three of my brothers, they were all killed during the war. One was killed in Ethiopia, one was poisoned in Ethiopia. He was the logistician of the military base. And then the other one was also an instructor of the artillery section. That one got disappeared in Jupa, in the capital in 2007. Disappeared one morning until today, is nowhere to be seen. We have just concluded that he, he was just assassinated or, or dumped somewhere else. And then the, 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 the one whom I follow died just here in 2018. One was killed in, uh, in, in, uh, in Uganda. And that brother, before Father Stephen had gone to see him, I actually went and I saw him. And I stayed with him for, for about an hour or so, and then I, I gone. So when Father Stephen went for his holidays, then he, they did not even, Father Stephen was still landing in uh, Kampala when he was in Arua. And now when they were deciding that, okay, they have to meet in Arua, and the following morning, Father Stephen is trying to travel so that they can meet with the brother. That morning, he just heard that the brother was assassinated. When he actually he called me to come so that we can discuss several things pertaining the family, when I arrived, just when the place where we planned to meet with him, I arrived there and then I heard only people crying in the, in the house. I asked, what is the problem? They said he has just passed on. I said, come on, he, I, we talked with him yesterday. Why should he die? Did he have an accident? No, they told me he did not have an accident, but he was just poisoned by the people, by the, the enemies, and he was really the man who, who is the backbone of the family, but he died and my younger brother is not, uh, is not working. There's no way he can fend for my nephews and nieces. When we look at our nieces, though intelligent they are, but they are not able to go to school. They are just sitting at home. There is no work to be done. Those three brothers were really very dedicated and, and very determined to bring, to bring peace, progress and development into South Sudan. When his brother, the recent one, died, he was in, uh, in Arua. I, I, I called him and I, and I said, sorry, Father Stephen, I heard uh, your, your, your brother uh, has been uh, assassinated. Father Stephen said, told me that we will have to pray for him and we have to pray for those who have killed him. That is what you won't get from so many people in a situation where the dead body of your brother is lying and you are seeing the assassin going. You are seeing them, you are looking at them, and then you, you, you just turn around and say, may God bless your soul, we pray that God forgive you, and we pray also that God forgive those who assassinated, who killed you. That to me and to us is a sign of a strong face. Father Stephen would have chosen not to believe in God, but to revenge, and that is what you see in, in, in South Sudan, mostly. We have seen uh, a, a priest um, dedicated to his face and living by example, trying to tell people you don't need to return wrong by wrong. That to me is a very strong face. I would like to say that uh, those who killed my brothers uh, and, uh, and all those who did wrong to me, uh, I, I keep on praying for them during my mass. Every, every morning when I, when, I, when I say my mass, I pray for them. Uh, I ask always God to forgive them, God to give them a renewed heart, a, a heart of flesh, not a heart of a stone. Uh, because by me forgiving them, uh, God will also forgive me of my, my shortcomings, of, of my sins. From the time when I was born and then I started to grow up and when I joined the primary school and joined the seminary, 
uh, until when I became a priest. Uh, it was not an easy journey. It was a, a journey full of suffering. Many people did a lot of things, bad things to us, like the soldiers who was urinating on us, and many, many, many other challenges. Uh, we have to travel several miles on a bicycle, eating uh, wild fruits, drinking dirty water, and uh, sleeping on a bed without mattress, just on a mat until morning, and only covering with the blankets. There were a number of, of things, but one thing kept me going is my faith and my vocation. My dad and mom, they were both staunch Catholics. What I was able to see in my dad was, despite all this suffering, he never forgot his God. And he left us a promise. He said, all his children, he wants them not to forget the church, but to embrace the church with one mind, one heart. There is practically a lot of suffering going on, but uh, does that one make somebody not to, to love God? No. Suffering is part and parcel of our lives, and uh, we have to put up with it. Our Lord himself suffered for our sake. Why should we not suffer for the sake of the others? Amid suffering, let us put God, let us put Jesus in the middle of all the making, and we shall be happy we shall remain proud and we shall be, be good Christians. Shalom World brings to you the Catholic faith in all its different dimensions. It can be a faith to inspire you in, in your own living of your Catholic life in society. Salon World offers you an opportunity of being rich and strengthened in your family life. We live in a culture that needs to have a Catholic presence. We live in a culture that needs to be evangelized by the presence of Catholic teaching and the inspiration to live according to our Catholic way of life. I recommend to you you're involved to be involved in the work of Shalom World. May the Lord bless you and bless the work of Shalom World. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.